Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I give you the Les Paul recording model. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And this one was actually signed by Les Paul himself. I know, I know, no, 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 really, no, really, it's fine, it's fine, honestly. Okay, dokie, okay. set pick up time and we will start as per usual these days with the noisy setting that is of course with the guitar overdriven on distortion. <laughs> Crikey, that is a big fat sound. Uh, th there's loads of other stuff on here which we'll have a look at in a minute. Uh, so that was on the bridge and let's have a look in the centre. It's like oak and cider uh, with a little bit of brown beer mixed in too. On to the neck position. In there. And so on with the clean setting. Hmm. And we will start with the bridge end. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, into the center. to those that let's just bung it in the center for a moment and there's a um, uh, there's a tone switch here so uh, let's just have a There's all 
also a kind of chicken head thing <coughs> here that's actually called decayed, D-E-C-A-D-E, -E, as in 10 years. Uh, maybe it took them 10 years to make it, I don't know. Uh, so, see what it does. <coughs> and a nuanced uh, sound, but you know, all in all, sounds great to me. Let's have a look round it. Well, I do have a few things to tell you about this really astonishing and brilliant instrument. Um, so, first of all, it is a Les Paul recording model, and it was designed to play both live but also in a recording uh, situation. And there are different features that allow you to do that. I actually had one of these in, back in the sort of mid 70s. And it was uh, quite an early one that didn't have the high impedance output. Ooh, wish I still had that now, but there you go. Um, so let's have a quick look from stem to stern and see what we've got. So for a start, I mean, you will note that the headstock certainly implies custom shop with the split diamond and that lovely, is it four, I think four ply uh, binding around there. On the back, you have got uh, shower um, tuning machines. Now, have a look at that serial number. Thing is that you will note that above it, there is the number two. Now this can indicate one of two things. In the Norlin era, uh, from 71 to whenever it was, they did reuse some of the earlier serial numbers for some imp totally imperceptible reason. So that two at the top of the headstock could either indicate that it's the second time that they used that serial number or that in fact it was a factory second. If it was a factory second, then generally speaking, the as, as we know from that old Sonex that I had, generally speaking, um, the uh, uh, workers would buy these for very, very little money and they would raid the parts bin and put all the best bits on. Uh, so, so it's either one of those, but we don't know. What we do know from the pots, and you'll see it, photo of the inside of the scratch plate. This is without doubt a plumber's nightmare. It's even more complicated, I would say, than those Dan Electros, and they are pretty tricky fellows to work on. Uh, so what else do we have? Well, this is in the natural mahogany finish. Yes, I know, yes, you'll, you'll have spotted this, won't you, see? And you can feel it as well. We'll get to that in a moment. So we've got block inlays rather than trapezoid or dots. And there, well, there's some kind of binding on the neck, but there's certainly, there's certainly no nib end, or not like modern nib end binding. Oh, oh, by the way, of course, you can see that the action there is just where I like it. It plays like butter. It is superb, superb to play. These pickups, I, I don't know, but I've got to be honest, I don't know much about them. I've tried to do a little bit of research and I'm afraid that the information is pretty, well, scant to say the least. But the important bits are, like we always like to look at, at our Gibsons, the important bits are the uh, the volute and that is a beautiful raised volute i'm rather liking that uh, so that is totally intact check and of course we do like to look at the kneel <laughs> i've done it again the neck heel joint uh, which is uh, you know that's absolutely bob on neck straightness check uh all the controls and electronics check 
playability checked like a picnic table cloth. It is superb. So it's all mahogany construction and it has a rosewood fingerboard with, you know, you know, a baloney. Lovely. Blur of pearl. Lovely. See if you're in lays. And of course, you still got that binding continues all the way around the body. And, thi and this does look a little bit like uh, sort of one of those pancake bodies where you've got like a some kind of uh, sandwich effect going on there. Can you see what I mean? Either that or it's a very, very deep maple cap. Uh, these were one of the, uh, probably one of the earliest weight relieved uh, models and I will try to keep this as brief as I possibly can. But the, certainly the scratch plate does let us know that this was made in 1971 which is lovely. I was 11 years old and uh, would have uh, given a kidney for one at that time. Uh, we've got uh, a bridge that was made by harmonica. What? Oh, sorry, a harmonica uh, bridge and your traditional stop tail. And that control plate looks intimidating, but, it, but actually, once you've fiddled about with it for a little bit, it really isn't, and it does all make sense. What I did not show you was, um, what I didn't demonstrate was the impedance, because quite frankly, it's a little bit pointless. Uh, there's an impedance switch here. As you can see, it tells you that we can have either high or low impedance. And apparently there's some kind of special lead that you can get that, uh, that allows you to plug into, you know, um, a desk or some kind of studio situation. Uh, here we have the uh, volume control. On Gibson's volume controls always seem to be the highest ones up, you see, uh, toward the head. Here we've got something that says, I, I have no idea why it says decayed, because of course decayed means 10 years, and that is a, it's a very, very subtle uh, kind of tone control, but apparently it plays with the harmonic somehow. And this really was part of, uh, I mean, Les Paul himself did, in fact, design or certainly outline all of the, uh, all of the gubbins contained in here. Uh, we have also got an in and out of phase a button there, which you should be able to see. And we've got a, a tone a tone selector switch, a little bit like, you know, a strap blade switch, if you will. And then you have a bass, uh, a bass and a treble control. You can see the scratch plate has become, a, well, not scratch plate, the control plate has become damaged at some point and of course it's just been, it's been repaired with an extra bit of plastic here. You can, you can actually get, you can actually get these, um, uh, these plates from somewhere in Canada, I believe. Uh, so that will, probably be quite a nice thing to have on here but nonetheless let's get to the point in question and this is the biggie for me now first of all these in this natural finish usually will if you can find a decent 70s one uh you will pay oh, somewhere between three and a half and five thousand quid but if you can find one that was actually etched personally by the great man himself, well, I'm going to sit, listen, I'm going to tell you now, this belongs to my mate, Bob, and he does have this for sale at the moment on eBay, and he's asking d d d just a smidge over three and a half thousand quid for it. Quite frankly, I think that that is vastly underpriced because of this. Now, not only do we have this, but we have all of the provenance that goes with it 
the original owner and how it came to be signed and all the backstory with it and there's paperwork to back all this up and the, and really the history itself is utterly utterly spellbinding and i've got to tell you i will be reluctant to part with this because it is great to play he, he just asked if i'd you know give it a quick restring and a bit of a check over and and all it, let me tell you all is good this thing absolutely plays brilliant and this and the sound it sounds like a gibson and yet there are so many different little fancy things that you can get out of it and you only heard a little snippet of it there i do hope that uh, you know that came across okay uh you know it's got a belly carve here and it oh and what i would say is once again very 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 much unplayed when i took the strings off there's absolutely n nothing oh, next to nothing on the frets and they are a bit flat and smooth the re and the reason i know that uh that this hasn't had you know it's not been in workshops and in and out of places and what have you is because there are no t there's no tooling marks on the fretboard. The fretboard is absolutely immaculate. So if any if anybody had been there, you know, like crowning, filing, leveling, what have you, I would know because you would certainly see some evidence on the fingerboard. Um, and and to finish off, if all that wasn't enough for you, signed by the great man himself, it's also been played. And, and again, we've got photographic evidence of this. It's also been played by Elvis Presley's biological son. I can't top that. So it's been a joy to have this in my possession for a, for a short while. And with that, I shall bid you all a fond farewell. And uh, it's adios amigos. Ta-ra.